Hello and welcome to the first T20 International 2 in this series between the UAE and USA from the ovals of the ICC Academy in Dubai. Uh, my name is Barney Reed, and I'll be at the commentary helm over the next two days with some very special guests also jumping in alongside me to add a little sprinkle of magic and some real insight into cricket played in both the UAE and USA. It's been a testy start here this morning. We've had two rain showers, which has meant a delay to, to proceedings. Uh, we have gusts of wind attempting to... Uh, knock over this umbrella into our production kit um, and we also have overcast conditions that will benefit the bowlers you'd imagine first up and the UAE have won the toss and elected to field Mohammed Navid will take the new ball for the UAE and he will be bowling first of all to Jaskaran Malhotra And that, the very first ball in USA T20 international cricket, patted back into the offside by Jaska Jaskaran. And we are underway. Again, this is the first ever T20 international from the USA in terms of their cricket. A very historic moment that's been in the making for the last 18 months and comes on the back of the ICC approving them as an associate member, the 105th member in the, in the ICC just in January of, la of this year. A momentous occasion here for the USA. Um, and here we Naveed again running in. And the USA are up and running. A lovely shot through backward point. And it's also a no ball, so it'll be a free hit. And Jessica ran lovely shot for four through through backward point there. The UA the USA are up and running. Jessica Rand, of course, plays for Triggers Cricket Club in the Houston Cricket League in the USA. 29-year-old wicketkeeper batsman, a stylish, stylish player. So a great start for the USA. Naveed in again. And Jessica Rand hits it high in the air. Sultan Ahmed coming in from the deep, deep square leg, but doesn't reach it. It's just a single. It lands safely. But that is what Naveed gives the UAE. He's their talismanic bowler, captain of the side now, despite the return of Rowan Mustafa, the long-term captain. Naveed, very slick, has a great Yorker in his armory and also a great bumper, as you see there. Came on very quickly to Jessica Rand. Javier Marshall now his face is first ball. No run. Javier Marshall actually played seven tests for the West Indies, six T20 internationals and 24 ODIs for the country of his birth. Made his test debut at just 19 against Sri Lanka. And his last test against England in 2009. Now a fully-fledged USA cricketer, of course. Squirms it onto the offside, there's no run. Marshall was born in Jamaica, but plays his cricket now for the Villagers Athletic Sports Club in the New York Me Metropolitan Cricket League. Lives in Long Island, New York. He has two Test 50s to his name with the West Indies. Now part of a historic USA side here. And the Veed ends very well. Yeah, one more for that no ball. Right on the money there, back of a length. Just coming slightly back into the batsman. Slight change here. Man coming out of slip and into mid-wicket. 
Just in the 30-yard circle beyond the one. Obviously just two plays outside of the 30-yard markers in these first six overs of power play. Naveed bustling in. And Marshall's off the mark. Tucks it away to deep square leg for a single. And that brings an end to the first over. The USA six for none off that first over. So seven for none with that single from Javier Marshall. And the UAE brings spin into the equation right from the off. Sultan Ahmed will take the ball from the city end. Ahmed came into the side in those Nepal games that the UAE lost just a couple of months ago here. Lost both the T20s and the ODIs, 2-1 in that series. Without Rohan Mustafa, Rami Shazad and Ahmed Raza, who all come back into the team today. Ahmed was impressive. Wily slow left armour. Will attack the pads. Bowl very straight. Jaskaran will face up to him first. A steady start to proceedings after that first over. Sultan, uh, you can see there, flat through the air. Won't be spinning it too much, but will be attacking those stumps. We have a man out of long on and a man out of deep square leg. There are opportunities to score here for Jaskaran. Sultan Ahmed, small frame, springs to the wicket. Jaskaran turns it into mid wicket, but no run. A good start here from Sultan Ahmed. Very solid start. Oh, and it's a wicket, Sultan. Jaskaran goes back when he probably should have gone forward. And as it's saying, Sultan will really attack those stumps. It's played all around it. And that's the first wicket. Just going. Is it Javier Marshall? Sorry, Javier Marshall played all around it. And he's gone for one. Seven for one after 1.3 overs. Sultan Ahmed with an instant impact. Brings Stephen Taylor to the crease. <laughs> Certainly not the start the USA would have wanted. The perfect one for the UAE. Stephen Taylor, the left-handed batsman, born in Florida, plays his cricket at Sheffield Cricket Club, though in the New York Me Metropolitan Cricket League. Made his USA debut at just 15 years of age, now 25. Coming in at three to face Sultan Ahmed. Already the pressure placed on the USA team here. Oh, and a cracking shot, first ball. Barely any backlift. He's not gone through entirely of the shot. Just stopped on it, but timed it beautifully over long off. And a six, first ball from Stephen Taylor. A wonderful shot. Pressed forward and just struck through the line. Timed it impeccably. And it's gone soaring over the sight screen. 
what a way to get off the mark. Next ball just turned into the leg side. Stephen Taylor remembered for playing one of the all-time great American innings, 96 not out of 54 balls, including a last ball six to help beat Canada at the World T20 America's qualifier. And what an introduction that was. Launching Sultan Ahmed over his head for six. And at the end of that over, we are 13 for one. Two overs in, four left in the power play. Naveed will continue from this Reem Ram end. Very good running from the USA there. Jessica Rand just opening the face, running it behind point. Excellent piece of running. Nice early loud call. Scuttling through. Never in doubt there. Naveed again going back of a length. Taylor just pulling it away, easing it into the square leg fielder on the boundary. And just a, just a single there. Naveed, as you'll see, likes to hit the deck. Hustles in. A lot of his pace comes through his action. Very burly bowler. Skids off the wicket. A very calmly controlled pull shot from Stephen Taylor there, though, as we battle with <laughs> the sounds of the buggies driving around the pitch. Jessica Rand. Oh, it's got through. Got through the legs of the fielder at mid-off. And it's four. Jessica Rand using his feet, going down the wicket, striking it lovely to mid-off, but should have been stopped. Sultan Ahmed there at mid-off started very well with the ball at the other end, but it was poor fielding there. Should have been a routine stop. Great intent, though, from Jaskaran. Taking the game to UE's premier seamer. Could be a very interesting battle between these two. Naveed again. Goes short. Very well played from Jessica Rand. Rides the bounce. Right in at his chest. Just turns it away for a single. Taylor back on strike now. Currently seven not out after that six off the first ball. Naveed to bowl. Taylor clips into space. 
could well be four goes all the way. Again, the timing, absolutely impeccable from Stephen Taylor. It's just nudged that round the corner and it's absolutely raced to the boundary. The man out there at deep backwards square couldn't get round in time. Taylor looking absolutely brilliant so far. Looks in fine touch. Taylor this time pushed back by Naveed. Pats it back to the bowler and that ends the third over. 24 for one, the USA. Going nicely, eight and over so far. Just that one wicket of Javier Marshall falling to Sultan Ahmed in that second over. Sultan again will take the ball from this city end. Jaskaran and Taylor just easing along nicely here. Both timing the ball very well. Jaskran hits straight down the ground. Just a single to long on. Ahmed Raza down there. One of the best fielders in the UAE side. You see that of his arm there. Straight over the top of the stumps. Now Stephen Taylor. Will he go big again? Long on is back. Ahmed Raza back there. But you imagine he'll be looking to go over the top once again with mid off up. Just a deep mid wicket out as the other, the second man outside of the 30 yard circle. CP Rizwan in front of us. Sultan now skipping in. Taylor goes back and cuts, and then he goes straight back to the bowler. It's tight, but yet more good running. The USA really putting pressure on the UAE fielders here in the ring. It's a real urgency about these two. These two batsmen also both have pedigree in franchise cricket. Stephen Taylor became highest paid franchise cricketer in USA history when Guyana Amazon Warriors paid $30,000 for him in the 2017 CPL draft. 2018 he moved to Jamaica Talawas. Lovely shot from Jaskaran. There's no man out here. Beat the fielder at extra and, and regular cover and it's gone all the way for four. A little bit of width offered by Sultan Ahmed and Jaskaran just frees his hands through it. And again, superb timing on what is a slick outfield after those showers that we had earlier on today. Jaskaran also was signed by St. Lucia Stars in 2018 for that CPL, alongside the likes of Darren Sammy, Kieran Pollard, Mitchell McLennigan, David Warner. Ended up not featuring, but was part of that squad. Very sensible cricket. It's got the boundary of the ball before, just then plays it down to bid on. Easy single to collect. End of another good over for the USA. 31 for one after four. Jessica and 17 not out. Steven Taylor, 12.
now have a change of bowling at that Reem Ram end. Naveed comes out of the attack. In his replace is Rohan Mustafa, the man he also replaced as captain since those games against Nepal. No official word yet whether that will be a long-term replacement in the UAE ranks, but at least for the time being, Rohan Mustafa is back in the side, but not back in as captain. Bowl is off he's now. And he likes to put the squeeze on the opposition. Another very wily off spinner will attack the stumps, will look to rush through the overs. Oh, lovely shot. Jaskaran goes straight after him, lofts it over mid off. Powerful strike from the from the USA opener. Comfortably cleared Naveed at mid off. Might for a minute have thought he was in in with a catch, but no chance. Gone straight over his head. One bounce four. Oh, he's gone again. This time sweeping. He's top edged it. Bring Stephen Taylor on to strike. Taylor chips down the ground. It's wide of the long on, and it goes all the way for six. The power behind Stephen Taylor is quite impressive. Times the ball beautifully. Long levers and big strong arms and clears the fence with effortless ease. How will Mustafa reply to that? Comes round the wicket. Taylor just plays it straight back to the bowler. Again, timing it beautifully. Strikes well again. Long honoured come up into the circle there. Taylor beats him comfortably. Some immense striking from him here. Twenty-five year old left hander Taylor is really seeing it well out there. He's moved on to twenty two, not out now. Really motoring along. Fancies Ryan Mustafa by the looks of it as well. Long on's gone back now again. Taylor follows up that boundary with a single. Very sensible cricket. He's got his runs for the over, keeps the strike. USA now 47 for one after five, just shy of 10 runs and over. It's an excellent start from them. We have the last over of the power play now. Zahor Khan will come into the attack for the UAE. A man with possibly the longest arms in cricket. Big long levers. So then last over of the power play, Sahul Khan, ball to Stephen Taylor. Oh, 
beats the bat as well. Very good start from Zahor. Skiddy bowler coming round the wicket there. Taylor trying to cut, probably just a little bit too close to him. Plays and misses, possibly for the first time in this inning so far. Good start from Zahor. The UAE need to pull this back a little bit, rein in the scoring of both Jaskaran and Taylor. We're going very well. Taylor this time cuts and cuts well. Beating point. Too wide from Zahor that time. Taylor again cutting hard. Beating point and it races away for four. Brings the 50 up for the USA after just 5.2 overs. Moved on to 51 for one. Taylor and Jaskaran really, really batting well here since that first first wicket dismissal for just seven in the second over of Javier Marshall. Meeting of the minds between the UAE bowler and captain and fielders now. Trying to work something out. Taylor really is putting the USA on top. Need to come up with something here, the UAE. Tight run again. But again, these two running very well between the wickets. It's tip and run when they're not not beating the field. Creating a great frustration for the UAE here. Ticking the scoreboard over, rotating the strike between the right-hander and the left-hander. Really putting the pressure on the hosts. An uncomfortable start for the UAE after they won the toss and elected to field. Thought there might be something in this deck with the rain that we've had today, the overcast cloud cover that we have. But the USA in control in the early early stages. It's a whore in it in again to Jaskaran this time. Goes down the wicket, slower ball from Zahor. <laughs> Jaskaran hasn't picked it. But he still managed to just nerdle it over to deep. Deep square leg and gets a single. Well bowled from Zahor. It's been an impressive part of this UE setup over the last 12 months or so. Usually effective at the death with slower balls and Yorkers. UE will need him to come up with something here. Two balls left in this first power play. Just the one wicket down for the USA. Jaskaran and Taylor edging towards a 50 partnership. Very encouraging start in this, the USA's first T20 international. Taylor gets a top edge. He's thrown everything at it. Gone over point. It's four more. Might be a slight bit of fortune there, but if you flash, flash hard as the saying goes. And it comfortably goes over point again, making the most of this, the final couple of balls of the power play. UA really on the back foot here. And that's the 50 partnership from these two. Really raced along. It's just four overs that they brought it up in. Mm, three and a half probably. A little bit, little bit less than four. Going superbly well. It's a whole of a slower ball bouncer. Again, catching the USA batsman out there, but Taylor fine. Just pats it down, <laughs> pulls out of the full-blooded hook. So that at the end of the power first power play, 57 for one for the USA, six overs in. Taylor 32 not out, Jasker and 22 not out. Very encouraging start from the tourists. And the hosts will be needing to think about things here. Get a few more fielders outside the ring. Again, Mustafa will take the ball. You'll see him really try and rush through the overs, put the pressure back on the other opposition. Be 
quick in between balls, getting the ball back in his hand, starting his run up, not allowing the batsman to settle. Five men out now. The point boundary, the square leg boundary, mid wicket, mid on, long off. One of those fielders at long on, just eased down the ground by Jaskaran for a single. Staffer this time cuts off that single down the ground. Straight back to his run up. Straight back to the delivery crease. This time timed again very well by Taylor. Just the one. Cut off well by Rami Shazad back down there. At long on. Back in the side today after being suspended for those games against Nepal. Social media outburst between three of the senior players of the UAE setup. Good fielding in there at cover. Cuts off the single. UAE playing to their own rhythm again a bit more now. And another dot ball. So top over so far, this from, from Rohan. Just the two runs from it so far. A single to finish it. A great over from the former UAE captain. It's three runs from that seventh over. USA now 60 for one. And the UAE will be hoping for more of that to move the game along at their, their pace that they're happy with. Another man key to that is now Ahmed Razu who's coming into the attack. Slow left armor again. One of those three players that was left out from the Nepal games. Him and Rowan in tandem very much will be looking to put the pressure back on the USA. Hustle through some overs, not be too costly, move the game along quicker than the USA would like. The pair have done this for a long time for the UAE. At the other end, Jaskaran will face up and there's Steven Taylor at the other end. These two going very well. They'll be keen to put Put their put their mark on this on proceedings again. Eased into the leg side just for a single off Raza's first ball. Wondering if Taylor will be looking to attack the spinner again. More risk in the shot now with the extra men out. But you'd fancy him to clear them after his earlier strikes. Nabid and Raza just having a, a little bit of a meeting of minds. Cracking shot from Taylor, breaks that gap in the in the offside, beats extra cover, goes all the way for four. Again, it doesn't look like Taylor's even hitting the ball or trying to really wall wallop the ball. 
just times it so well. Races for four. Instantly eases the pressure from that very good over from Mustafa, the last out. Taylor looking very good here. Uses his feet very well, leaps onto anything short. Still goes down the track and hits over the top as well. Oh, and he swept, swept hard here. It's coming into our way. <laughs> it misses us just by a few feet. And it's six. Taylor again. Striking the ball superbly. Moves on to 43, not out. Just sweeps and sweeps hard there. Had us <laughs> running for cover there a little as well. Nearly wore that one at mid-wicket in our commentary area. Very much an alfresco position we're in at the moment. Taylor again plants that foot a long way down the track and then just hits purely through the line of the ball to mid-off. Seeing it like a football out there today. He has 44 off just 21 balls now. Another single, very well run again. USA have been very impressed with their running between the wickets. Really putting the pressure on the UAE here, which they won't be too used to out here in the UAE in home conditions. They came out on the wrong side of that Nepal series in ODIs and T20s, losing both series 2-1. Very much felt like it was Nepal playing at home. Hundreds of Nepal fans, Nepalese fans, watching on from the sidelines, causing a cracking atmosphere here. Uh, here at the ICC Academy, again, those games. Far fewer numbers today, though we do have a few on the bank to our left. Another change of bowling here. Ashfaq Ahmed coming into the attack. Very much a part time spinner in this UAE setup. Again, they'll be looking to sneak a few, a few overs out of him in this period. The rain falling again here. Wonder whether the. You see the ground staff are readying themselves just behind one of the sight screens. Or oh, a little bit of a mix up. Jaskaran wanted to, but sent back rightfully so by Taylor. I wonder whether the ground staff might be getting ready to bring those covers back on. It's a light shower. Let's start this from Ashfaq. Run a ball so far off his first three deliveries. He will definitely take that, and so does Captain Mohammed Naveed. He can keep it up. Taylor looks superb through mid off and mid on. Standing very tall, getting a good stride in, striking cleanly through the ball. Jaskaran goes big. 
goes over long on and a fantastic catch held superbly down here in front of us Sultan Ahmed stunning catch on the boundary leaping in the air to his weaker right hand side clings on beautifully Jaskaran departs 27 off 21 balls brings to an end a great partnership from these two Ashfaq Ahmed making a superb impact said he's a part-time spinner in this UAE setup but probably not doing him enough justice there USA 73 for one now so 77 for two now after 8.5 overs Absolutely superb catch that. Sultan Ahmed running round. He got caught in the wind. He looked like he was caught underneath it. Wasn't going to get to it. He's leapt in the air. Taking an absolute stunner in front of what crowd we do have. He's getting applauded for it now. Clearly delighted with that. Big smile on his face as he, as he clinched it and realised he'd held onto it. Superb catch. Monang Patel, the new man in for the USA. At the end of that over, 77 for two off of nine. One wicket for four runs for Ashraf Ahmed after that first over. Superb introduction for the off spinner. Patel, the new man in, plays for Freedom Cricket Club in the Cricket League of New Jersey. Now getting a helmet out. Just came out on his cap, expecting some spin. But we have Zahul Khan back in the attack. Be coming round the wicket of Stephen Taylor. He's on 46, not out. May well hold the key now for the USA. If he can see this out and go the distance, they'll be looking at a big score, you'd imagine, the way he's been hitting it so far. Oh, and he goes again. This time, Sultan Ahmed is caught. Sorry, CP Rizwan is caught right underneath it. And there's that dreadful moment for a fielder when it bounces behind you when you've gone in for the catch. And that's his 50. A cracking knock from Steven Taylor. Goes to 50 off of tw just 25 balls. And that's the first official T20 International 50 for a USA batsman. He's looked absolutely superb so far. And yeah, CP Rizwan should really have made a better crack of that. He's in business again now, but he's beaten again. Taylor pulling the ball so well. That one a little bit slower from Zohul Khan. But again, he's kept in full control of it, beaten the man at short fine leg and the man on the deep backwards square boundary. Taylor absolutely racing along. Rain coming a little bit heavier now. Still the covers aren't looking like they're going to be brought on. The umpires aren't making any sort of signs that they're looking for them. And Taylor just keeps going. It's a misfield again here, this time from Shazad. But it's just the one. It's not cost anything. Umpires now taking us off the pitch, calling for the covers. And what a shame. We have more rain falling. The USA 86 for two after 9.3 overs. Steven Taylor 55 not out and going very well so far. But the rain will bring a short stop to proceedings, hopefully. 
Hopefully we won't be off for too long. UE players staying on the pitch for the minute. Taylor being applauded to the to the changing rooms by his USA teammates. So for now, the covers are coming on. The USA has said 86 for two after 9.3 overs. Javier Marshall and Jack Skaran Malhotra are the two men to go. Stephen Taylor and Manang Patel, the men at the crease. Taylor dominating so far, 55 not out. Seven fours and three sixes. And we will be back when we have some more news of play. For now, we will take a little breather while the rain falls here at the ICC Academy in Dubai.
We are back underway after a rain interval. USA resuming on 86 for two, now 87 for two, coming to the end of the... Being told that this game will now be a 15-over affair each side after those rain showers that have fallen just again. Just as an update, Stephen Taylor's going very well before that break. On 55 off 27. Khan. He's gone for 20 off his 1.4 overs so far. USA were enjoying life before that break. Wonder whether that will change momentum now. Taylor up and running right away. Runs one down to third man. Using the pace of, the, of Zahor. Runs it for four. Taylor, the Florida-born native, played for Sheffield Creek Club in the New York Metropolitan League. Has looked in fine touch here so far. And going great gun. And again, they're using the pace, being trickier rather than the bludgeoning approach that he's got as well. As a whole, those slowable bounces. Found some success with them so far. You say scamper through for a single. We're 92 for two after 10 overs. As we said, we've got five overs left after those rain that rain interval. The USA score will probably be slightly adjusted as well. And I'm joined now by Peter Delapena, ESPN Crick Info reporter. Peter, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to be here, Barney. <laughs> Excellent to have you. I mean, uh, so far USA looking in good shape before that uh, before that break. Well, I lo they looked like they were going to get about 200, and uh, and then the rain came again. Uh, Taylor's been immensely impressive. As as good as USA's looked here, and, and UAE, by comparison, has been quite sloppy. They could, perhaps, have even had an even better start. Strategically, they made kind of a, a very curious move for a lot of the followers at home. Monang Patel, who's been dominant as an opener in every format for USA, they curiously bumped down to number four to make room for Xavier Marshall. USA scamper through for a single there. Taylor dabbing it down to third man. What 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 would be the thinking behind that then? Why would Monak have come in lower for making way for, as you said, Xavier Marshall? Well, Xavier's got a reputation of a huge hitter of the ball, but he's not an established member of the team. Let's just remember, he's working his way into the USA lineup. This is an, a new experience for him breaking in, into the squad after being out for more than a year. And Monank, by comparison, he came onto the scene in the summer of 2018. He scored a, an incredible century at USA Trials. He's scored four centuries in the last year at major kind of competitions. The first one was this trial century he's he scored in Texas off of 81 balls and I think that's what was actually the best of the lot he subsequently scored a century against Belize in the T20 qualifier in uh, North Carolina and then centuries against Jamaica in the Super 50 tournament down in the West Indies another superb shot from Taylor strokes it through extra cover motoring along here 67 not out currently a century against Jamaica in the, in the West Indies, and then he scored a century against Uganda in the first match of World Cricket League Division Three in Oman. So Monong's been their informed batsman at the top of the order. And if you're going to bump somebody out to make room for Xavier Marshall, why would you bump Monong out? A or B? Why would you? Why? Why does Xavier Marshall deserve to come straight in? He's got to earn his way, and he has he's really changed that at the start of the match today. Mm. 
Yeah, failure for Xavier Marshall earlier on. Uh, you mentioned uh, Monac coming through those um, combines, the, the player trials that have been running across the US. Have they been productive in producing new players on the scene? I'm a believer. Okay. <laughs> combines. Not everybody is. <laughs> it's a very contentious thing in the US. Monac is definitely one of the players that, that has justified the combines being put on as he drives another run down the green. And a guy like Nasser Kenzo was not in the line today. Another example who more or less came from obscurity playing in the lower level club circuit in New York and Debut in Uganda in May 2017 at the Division Three tournament. Mona got his chance. Ali Khan, he was discovered through the combine. And now is, is had a fantastic run in the T20 franchise circuit. But there's quite a number of players who would have never uh, gotten the chance through the combine. And Mona is Ooh. the line. Five for ten today. So yeah, Sultan Ahmed back into the attack. Monarch has run past that one, but missed stumping. It goes for four buys. Chance there for the UAE. So where, where's the contention from, from, from these player trials that have been running across the states? The opposite viewpoint is that there should be a national tournament structure, which was the way it was set up under the USACA regime. And there are merits to both. It's not to say that one is bad or, or one is better. Oh, Sultan getting that all kinds are wrong. Wide down the leg side, five of them. This is kind of disappointing. So this, this has been really off the mark. From quite early UAE, there was the missed chance at deep square leg when Steven Taylor was on 46 that CP Rizwan just came in and ran past the ball just ran underneath it yeah <laughs> when it should have been a straightforward chance and now we've got the missed stumping wides down the leg side it's not not been a sharp performance by any stretch by uae so far today and this is their strength as well in the field normally on the money with the ball like to really pressure the side in the middle overs bring the spin on rohan and ahmed Naveed normally firing up top as well. You're right, Peter. They've not quite hit their straps today. Taylor again going into the leg side. Just the one. Good fielding by Mohamed Bouta. Going back to the, 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 the tournaments versus the combines, players love match situations and so when you're playing in a national tournament you've got that pride to represent your region like you would in a domestic setup in a first class structure where you're playing for a county or, city or what have you takes a single to extra cover but the combine has has different attributes that will help identify a player skill set if, if they're worthy of making the national team that if you're especially if you're coming from a packed region mm. such as New York for example where the field is not often quite heavy where I, I, if you're the 15th best guy in New York you might not get into the region team and get no and that 15th best guy in New York could be better than the best guy on the combine system. yeah if you're in the combine system you have a chance to be the 15th best guy in New York and somebody else Best guy in New York, the 15th New York's best guy in the national tournament. You know. But there's still something to be said. Monak hoiks over to mid wicket. And it beats the fielder. It's his first boundary. You want to take the strip on that side of the ground? That's the shorter boundary today. They're, they're kind of mm. playing on the western side of the square on this strip. And Stephen Taylor in particular, but now Monak too, when they've whipped the ball to that, that western side. 
it doesn't take much to beat the fielder, whereas on this eastern side, the boundary looks like it's about five to ten yards. It's that little bit deeper. longer, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. USA 119 for two after 12. Three overs to go of this innings. What do you think is a good score here? I mean, uh, th there'll be a an adjustment because of the rain, you'd imagine? Well, I thought 200 was definitely within reach if it was a full 20 over affair. Yeah. With reduced overs, I, I still think 155 to 160 is realistic with Steven Taylor at the crease. If, if UAE can get Steven Taylor out, that changes things. But he's, he's summoned here, and he's got a century in sight. He really does. Yeah, it's, it's a rare commodity in associate cricket to have someone as, as powerful as him to to be able to go over the top. Seemingly it will. Big shout from Rohan Mustafa back into the attack here, but nothing doing there from the umpire. He scored a magnificent unbeaten 96 against Canada and North Carolina at the regional T20 qualifier in North Carolina that last September. And that was kind of a spiritual awakening for his <laughs> batting because <laughs> for the longest time I'd say there was a good three or four year stretch beginning in the summer 2013 where he really was struggling to score runs no run there well he's, he's not struggled to score runs today he's looked absolutely brilliant he's timing the ball so well some of those hits that he's hit uh, over long off and long on doesn't seem to even be going through full fully with a shot he's just using all his timing and those long levers. Maybe a run out here. Yeah, looks out. Rohan Mustafa off his own bowling. Runs out Monik Patel for nine. And the USA's running's been so good so far up until that moment. Well, I think in a different situation where they wouldn't be at a point of urgency in the last couple overs, perhaps that wouldn't have been... Uh, a situation where that would have come out, but I think they're just looking for everything right now. Trying to force the issue a bit, maybe, going into these, as I said, the back end of this. was only 15 balls left of this innings. He, he too, he's just desperate to get Stephen Taylor back on strike. Absolutely, because yeah. Because, again, inside of a century, you could say there's only 15 balls to go, but with Stephen Taylor, the way he's been hitting the ball today, he might only need six balls or five balls to to bring up three figures. And this is Roy Silva coming to the crease. Can you tell us anything about Roy? Roy had a, a fairly distinguished first-class career in Sri Lanka before coming to the U.S. He came to the U.S. via Ireland and has had a, a few different stops trying to, to find his footing. Staffer into Taylor. Hoiks it into the leg side. Just be one. playing in a lot of these T20 private competitions around the U.S., but he's been inconsistent when playing for USA. He had a, a brisk half century on a warm-up tour to Antigua last month. That is a sign that he could be closer to getting into some form. He's had a go right from the off, and he's beaten the fielder. Wow, he's absolutely motored off the bat there, going through extra cover out there he didn't have more than five yards to move no he didn't but no. Silva timed the ball well and there wasn't much time to cut it off because th that short western side anything that it goes over there it's a quick outfield and it's just racing to the boundary today he's going again this time towards cow corner and they'll run two misfield out there Sloppy fielding from the UAE at times today. Couple of missed fields, one going through Sultan for four earlier on at mid-off. There was the Rizwan chance you mentioned, Peter. Not been quite at their best today in the field. I'd say they've given away too many runs. It's inching up to 20 runs now in the field they've given away. Which, especially in a 15-over match, could play a huge, huge factor. Roy Silva, he... Also, more more recently, especially recently, he just got off the plane about uh, 26, 27 hours ago. He was the last arrival for the <laughs> USA squad. They all flew in from their home cities. And he's, I believe at the moment, based in, in uh, Florida. He, he at one point was in Atlanta, and now I think he's in the Tampa area. 
And so he didn't get in until around 10, 11 o'clock yesterday morning. Didn't show up to training yesterday because he'd just gotten off the plane. So he's coming in essentially fresh fresh off the plane with no training whatsoever and getting that boundary to start off. Yeah, looks it's like good, he's well, not, he's not suffering too much jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't blame him if he was. It's a long old flight. You and Captain Mohammed Naveed coming back into the attack now. He's rolling to Taylor. And the UAE, you feel, need to get rid of Taylor before he unleashes with these two overs to go. 127 for free. And that might be it. Sultan coming in and takes the catch. Taylor doesn't get hold of the pull shot. And Sultan with another second very good catch of today. And that's the end of Steven Taylor. 72 or 37 balls. It's a fine, fine innings. Abruptly coming to an end there, though. The USA would have wanted him there for the end, wouldn't they, Peter? To get past 150, 155, yeah, Steven Taylor really had to, to stay out there. But Sultan Ahmed, after the catch he took earlier, <laughs> that was a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> I must say, for anyone who watches UAE cricket regularly, that came as a surprise, that catch earlier on. Leaping across to his right. Stunning catch. Well, he was, it was like almost a scene out of one of those Warner Brothers cartoons where you've got a guy kind of with a, a, a dust trail and circling around over and over and over and over, circling around the ball. He was fighting <laughs> a, a win. I don't know if it was real or imagined. <laughs> it could have been either. But it could have been both. He didn't look confident. And then, magically, leaped up. Stuck the landing. That was the other aspect of it. He was right near the rope. Absolutely. And I thought even if he took the ball, he was going to stumble over and make it six. But he, he kept his balance, stayed in, and took the catch. And then that one, that was that was simple compared to the previous. Hayden Walsh Jr., the new man. Peter. Had a fantastic tournament in Oman on his debut for USA. And he's a guy, as Silver Clips went to the prior day, that could be a genuine star for USA over the next five to ten years. He was, in my view, their MVP in their promotion bid at Division Three in Oman. Had some very key innings with the bat down the order. And then with the ball, his leg spin caused a lot of problems. So whether it's 50 over cricket or T20 cricket, he's definitely a player to watch. Yeah, he goes for a scoop there. Doesn't quite get get enough of it. Just runs a single through though. He's off the mark. Yeah, that tournament, no mind. You were you were there covering that. He's taken seven wickets, scored 167 runs. Not a bad return for for uh, Walsh Jr. Doesn't sound like a lot. Of Key contributions at key times. At key moments, he stood up. And even in, th in the match that they lost to Oman, he took he took wickets in his last over and, and sparked a few runouts. And there was a couple of missed chances as well that if uh, guys had held on to the ball, he might have dramatically spun USA to victory in, in what was a very tight, tight loss to Oman in that tournament. But he's he's a very exciting prospect. Oh wow, Roy Silver, a massive hit over to that short boundary that Peter mentioned before. Caught right underneath, a slightly back of a length, but on the up, hoiked Navid over square leg. It's just a wristy flick. He didn't he didn't do much power wise, but he timed it absolutely superbly. It's been a hallmark of this. USA innings, they've timed the ball so very well. Which isn't the easiest thing to do on some here in the UAE, where it can be, the ball can stick in the pitch, it can be quite slow. And especially when you've just gotten off a plane about 27 yes. hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been met with rain. It's not the easiest thing to do. That there was some hit. I've been told, Barney, that desert rain is, is good luck. <laughs> so maybe it's bringing good luck for Roy Silva. <laughs> maybe, yes, maybe. As David comes in again. And Silva goes again. Back to back sixes. This time over just wide. Probably cow corner. 
Another monster of a hit. This Roy gr- Silver, this fine. Ground, excuse me. Sorry about that, Barney. Th- this ground is tailor-made for Roy Silver, because, and especially batting from this side, where he's he likes to clear the front leg and kind of aim for that mid-wicket, mid-on area. And on that side of the ground where you got the short boundary, that's where he's primed to make big runs and quick runs, mm. which USA really needs with seven balls to go. There's some impact that he's made here. 19 off five balls after those consecutive sixes. Naveed given something to think about. His last ball of his spell, where he's gone to th- gone for 32 off of 2.5 overs. Oh, make that 38 off a of three. A third six in a row. Roy Silver, take a bow. I tell you what, as good as this hitting is by Roy Silver, not very clever bowling. I no, have to he's say. missed the mark, hasn't he? The the lengths he's bowling there, that was right in the slot. Mm. Just a foolish length. If he's aiming for Yorker there, he's missing quite badly. And he was also r- really bowling one pace that entire over. Yeah. No, no real attempted slower balls. Nothing really to try and mix it up and and throw Silva off balance. And he just once he got his timing, he just kept on playing that front leg. Clearing it down the pitch, and boom, 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 mid-wicket, mid-on, and then a third straight back over the bowler's head into the facade of the academy building. And forget 155. They, they could be going for 160, 165 with yeah. six balls to go. I said Naveed allowing himself to be lined up there. One pace, missing his mark with Yorkers, which is a big surprise for Naveed. Normally hits them at will. Certainly not been at his best today. Gone for 38 off his three overs. The UAE captain will be very disappointed with that return. One over to go. 147 for four, the USA. Hayden Walsh Jr. on strike. Get Roy Silver on. This time he scoops over over short leg. Sorry, short fine leg. And it's a four for Hayden Walsh Jr. He tried that in the last over. This time he's got all of it, hasn't he, Peter? One of the things that USA has been missing in the last year or two is that kind of ingenuity down the order, especially in these kind of situations at the death, playing reverses, playing scoops, and seeing Hayden Walsh do that in this situation and do it successfully bodes well, not just today, but if you think down the road towards T20 World Cup qualifying, this is the kind of guy that USA has really been missing out down the order ever since Tim Roy Allen has been missing from the scene. So if Hayden Walsh can keep performing like this, this is going to be massive for USA. Mr. Hawkeye comes in again, round the wicket this time. Probably lucky to not be called a wide there. Maybe just inside the lines. It's a good ball, though. That's what was missing in the last over from Naveed, though. That Yorker. It's a wide Yorker. Yorker length. Dot balls. That's what UAE needs right here. And also, getting that wide outside off stump, if Walsh is premeditating that scoop, there's nothing really he can do with that. Absolutely, yeah. Takes that shot out of his arsenal. Four balls to go, 151 for four. Roy Silver at the other end will be itching to get on strike. It's got to be too high, Peter, because yeah, Walsh wants to see what he can do with those scoops, and he's got... Arsenal, but Roy Silva's red hot. You got to get the single to get him on strike. Mm. Oh, do you? <laughs> Aiden Walsh Jr. launching Zahu Khan over the sight screen for six. There's a p- appeal here from the UAE. It's given out. Hit wicket. Hit wicket indeed. Well, Hayden Walsh Jr. has lumped it over the sight screen for six, but he's been given out hit wicket. I couldn't see that live. I'm not sure if it happened in, in his follow-through because when the shot c- came off the bat, there didn't appear to be any second noise with the bat clanging into the stumps on the initial shot attempt. So it might have been a case of clearing in his follow-through. May well be. Unfortunately, we don't have a replay here to have a look at it again. Either way, he's had to trudge off. 151 for five, three balls to go.
Aaron Jones coming to the crease. Place for Barbados, first class cricket. One brings and leaves and another one enters. Yeah. <laughs> Both walls. Jones both having US but Jones has uh, quite a nice top spin above it and it looks like it is a short shot from the first leg and it is just yet to be spent some decent game time in the first leg and then and when he's come back to the USA day after those opportunities, he's performed exceptionally well. That's the key as well, isn't it? Feeding back into the side. Slower ball from Zahor Khan. His slow balls have been very good today. As you mentioned, Peter, being able to mix it up a little bit of the death here rather than that over from Naveed, which is a bit too monotonous, a bit too much of the same. And we have Roy Silva back on strike. And we've also got rain coming back down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fortunately, we will get to a break at least. The covers might have to come on again, though. It might, might delay the restart. It's been a bizarre day, hasn't it? I don't know. In all, all the times I've visited here, it's about six times I've been here. I can't remember it raining more than once. Slower ball again from Zahor Khan. And a run out for Roy Silva. Didn't quite know where the ball had landed. Sent back by Aaron Jones and routine run out for the UAE. Well, I'm not going to fault either guy for that one, really. Two balls to go. Absolutely. Roy Silva was looking to run on anything. And uh, good fielding, though, by Zahur and his follow through on a day where they've bungled quite a number of chances. And they almost, you could say, even though it was sharp to, to pick up on the follow-through, he was going for a direct hit there and kind of scuffed it into the pitch. But <laughs> good work by the wicketkeeper to corral that one and get the bails off. Brought to end a highly entertaining knock from Roy. 25 off six balls. Have Jesse singing now for the USA. Face the last ball of the innings. Zahor Khan will bowl it. 152 for six. And it's gone straight up in the air. Should be a routine catch. And taken. A Rowan Mustafa at point. Brings to end the UAE innings, uh, USA innings. 152 for six from their 15. Imagine that would get a slight alteration with the uh, rain effect, we've, the, the effect we've had from the rain that's reduced this to a 15 over a side affair. Peter, a good total in the end from the USA. I oh. think they possibly could have ended up a, a bit more than that the way they were going earlier on. It was looking like a great total six balls ago, <laughs> but what a fantastic over there by Zahur Khan. Just concedes the handful of, of runs, the first ball four scooped by... Hayden Walsh, but then after that, just one more ball, run, I think, that wide it? Yorker, then the, this the, what we thought was a six that turned into a hit wicket, a single by Jones, and then two more wickets in the over. So just five and only one off the final five balls. That's phenomenal for UAE. And heading into the break, as the covers are going to come back on with with rain coming down a bit heavier. Yeah. If if. They get back out there. I think UAE should be confident about chasing this. And just run through that USA batting order. Jessica Ann at the top of the order made 28. Javier Marshall came and went quite quickly just for one off seven balls. Steven Taylor was superb. His innings of 72 from 38 before going just with three overs to go. Monank Patel came in quick again, nine off 10. Then Roy was superb at the end, 25 off seven. Hey, Demolish that five off four. Aaron Jones just one off one ball. And then Zahor taking the wicket of uh, Jay Singh at the end. Uh, Jesse Singh at the end. For the UAE with the ball, struggled at times. Mohamed David, certainly not his best. One for 38 from his free overs. Sultan Ahmed, one for 26 of his slow left armors. And then Zahor Khan, exceptional at the end in that final over, just going for five runs. He ended up with two for 30. Ashfaq Ahmed with one for 14 from two. 
So the rain's falling at the moment. The covers, I believe, will be coming on soon, you imagine. Just making some running repairs to the wicket while we wait to see whether those covers come out. The UE will return, needing 153 to win. Thanks for joining us, Peter. We'll see you again for that second innings at some stage. It's a pleasure to be here. Hopefully be an entertaining chase for the UAE, but uh, historic day for Steven Taylor getting that made in T20 I-50 for, for the U.S. and historic rains. Exactly. Historic rains on a historic day for USA cricket. For the time being, we'll leave the interval and we'll be back shortly, hopefully, fingers crossed, without rain here at the ICC Academy in Dubai.
Welcome back to the ICC Academy here in Dubai, where we've had a little bit of a shortening of the match here. The USA finished on 152 for seven, but now we will have a 13 over chase of 143 for the UAE to win. More rain in the interval there has lost us a further two, ep two uh, overs for the UAE. Roe Mustafa back in the side after missing those Nepal games will open up. Alongside Sultan Ahmed. So 143 to win for the UAE from 13 overs. We're having a few technical difficulties of our cameras here where the rain has been hammering down today. Affecting this, the first official T20 international from the USA in their history. Momentous occasion for USA cricket here in Dubai. Roa Mustafa will take the first ball. And for the States, it'll be Jesse Singh who opens things up. Jesse Singh, a right arm medium bowler, born in Queens, New York. Plays for Smashers Cricket Club in the Cricket League of New Jersey. Has five first class matches in Sri Lankan cricket with Kalutara Physical Culture Club between 2016 and 2017. Recently back from injury. Two of the changes from that exceptional World Cricket League free side. Game promotion for the first time in USA history to World Cricket League 2, which will happen in Namibia in April. Top four sides of that will get full ODI status, will join the UAE in the later qualifying stage. A cracking start from Jesse Singh. Half-hearted appeal from the States. He runs down to third man. So we are up and running in this first, second innings of the game. Roa Mustafa getting off, off strike and off the mark there. Jesse Singh will run in again now. Quick through his run up. Go short and it's a chance and what a catch. Incredible catch, a close mid wicket. Jesse Singh has a wicket with second ball. Ashfaq Ahmed with a golden duck straight, heading straight back to the dugout. What a catch that was. It was Monak Patel at mid wicket, diving to his right and clinging on to a stunning catch. And a memorable first wicket in T20 international cricket for the UAE. Absolute stunner of a catch. And an excellent start for the USA. Cracking start to proceedings here. Manang Patel, take a bow. Leaping full stretch to his right. And holding on to a superb catch. Brings Shaman Anwar to the crease for the UAE. Shaman, probably the one of the only players to come out of that Nepal series defeat in the T20s of any sort of credibility of the bat. Scored the UAE's only 50 in that in that series. Where the UAE really struggled without the likes of Roe Mustafa, Ramesh Shazad. Their batting wasn't at its best there. It's a day with the ball they struggled as well. And the USA will have their backs up now. Mm. 
Jesse Singh runs in now to Shaman Amwa. And he's there. Back of a length again. Shaman on the pull. Doesn't quite get up. Bottom edges it into his pad and it rolls harmlessly to, to cover. No run. Jesse Singh turns, bustles through his crease, gradually getting quicker as he gets to the delivery stride. Shaman pulls again. This time, it's just a single. He sort of threatens for a second, but doesn't take it. Hayden Walsh Jr. doing the fine fielding down at deep backward square leg. Jesse Singh looking to hit the deck in these early balls of this UAE chase. Roa Mustafa back on strike now. Something of a point to prove after the captaincy being handed over to Mohamed Naveed. And he cuts. It's in the air for a long time, but it finds the gap. She races away for four. Slight bit of risk in that shot, isn't it? Carried in the air for a long time, but beat point and beat cover. UE up and running with Ernest there. That'll be a wide down the leg side. Mustafa's dropped his bat, but still saunters back for a second. It'll be three wides. Seeing getting it through there, but errant with his lines. After a fine start to the over for Jesse Singh, it's turning in UE's favour now. Nine off the first five balls. Staffer on strike again to Jesse Singh. Uh, dot ball to finish the over. Nine for one off the first over. And wow, that was an eventful start to this run chase. UE needing a further 134 from 12 overs. They need to go at just over 11 to do just that. Captain Saurabh Netravalka will share the new ball with Jesse Singh. Saurabh took over the captaincy from Ibrahim Khalil in October 2018. Seen some success in that time, certainly. A cracking shot meets him. Shame and Anwar rocking back, cutting and cutting hard through point. Dismissive start to welcome the USA captain. Absolutely crunched through point. The rain falling again here in Dubai on a day that we've also already seen overs lost. 
might might even see more now. Duckworth Lewis will start going into overdrive soon if we come off again. Netravalka back in. And pulled again, pulled hard by Shaman Anwar to that short boundary that Pia Della Pena was discussing earlier on that the USA really targeted Shaman rocking back, pulling to mid wicket, consecutive boundaries. And despite that early wicket, UAE have started very well here. Travalka, of course, plays for Marin One, Northern California Cricket Association. 27-year-old hometown of San Francisco Bay. He's born in India. Played in India under-19s. A World Cup. Shame Anwar chips it up, trying to scoop. And it's a drop catch. Hayden Walsh Jr. running round. And it should be a routine take, but he fumbles it to the deck. Shame Anwar gets away with that one. Trying to lift the ball over short fine leg, just top edges it. Hayden Walsh Jr. running from point. But shelves the chance. Will the USA rue that mistake? Shame and not a player that you want to give a chance to. One of the UE's pedigree batsman a number of years now. Rowan skipping down the track. He'll always give you a chance. He loves to use his feet to the fast bowlers. There just catches nothing but fresh air. It's been an eventful start to things here. Ten balls in, drop catch. Had boundaries. Had a stunning catch for a first USA wicket in T20 internationals. Rowan down the track again. A slower ball this time from Netravalka. Just the single. Collected by Elmo Hutchinson at mid-off. Travalka in again, this time to Shaman Anwar. Anwar strokes. Nearly beats the man at mid-off. It's another slower ball by the looks of it from Netravalka. Shaman Anwar got it cleanly, but can't beat the man. And two overs in with 19 for one in this UE chase. Further 124 required from 11 overs or 66 balls. Have a change of bat for Rowan Mustafa. Clearly not happy of his his other one. And Jesse Singh will continue. Jesse Singh now, running in. Ryan Mustafa on strike for the UE. And again, he's <laughs> Rohan is a aggressive top-order batsman. He'll give chances, but when he comes off on his day, he's a superb hitter of the ball. Some of it may not look the prettiest of cricket, like that there, where he's pirouetted and missed everything. Highly effective opener. Uh, Jesse Singh and the USA bowlers will be encouraged. There will always be a chance as he comes again round the wicket. 
and it's a wide down the leg side. Rohan so far looking every bit the player that missed those last few games against Nepal. A little bit of ring rust there in these early blows. And he's gone. He looked out of sorts. Jesse Singh has cleaned him up. Mustafa trying to drive but misses everything once again. And he's clean bowled for six from seven balls. UE 20 for two. And the former captain really didn't look in any kind of touch there. Played at missed at many. Just that one boundary. A disappointing return to the UE team. Jesse Singh has his second wicket. Two for ten so far. And the UE 20 for two. 2.2 2 overs in. Brings Rami Shazad to the crease. Again, one of those trio that missed out on the Nepal series because of social media comments about the Pakistan cricket board and the facilities for the Asia Emerging, emerging Teams tournament, the USA, uh, UAE ended up crashing out of. Shazad, their most elegant player. Chief run getter over the last two years. And you'll see he'll like to go over mid off, he'll like to go inside out over extra cover. He's got a bit of a task on his hand here. UAE already two down, just in the third over. Rami's back in the side. He'll be hoping to be in a bit better touch than Rohan was. Jesse Singh. Oh, beats the bat first ball. An absolute beauty. Back of a length. That corridor of uncertainty. That cliched corridor just has Rami's feeling for outside of off stump. And he doesn't get anything on it, but comfortably beaten there. Jesse Singh really hitting your straps here. So just back of a length, probing. He's causing the UAE problems. Comes in again now. This time Ramiz dabs it down, backward of point. Gets through to a single and the safety of the other end. Be relieved to get off the mark. Just feel the ball coming onto the bat a little bit. Bring Shame and Amwar back on strike. Shame and looked looked good so far. It's ten off just six balls, and a lot resting on these two for the UAE. Two of their most productive run scorers. They need to be at their best today. Jesse Singh bustles to the crease. Shayman flashes, top edges. It's a one bounce four. I'm just checking to see whether it cleared the rope or not. But again, he's flashed and he's flashed hard and it's six. It's gone over the rope. Those short boundaries down to that corner of the ground, paying dividend today. And joining us once again is Peter Delapena, ESPN Crick Info. As Jesse Singh runs in. Shaman clips it off his legs. Comes through for a single. And three overs in with 28 for two. What have you made of this start, Peter? Jesse Singh has been worthy of his selection in these first two overs that he's bowled think people from the U.S. side might have been a 
touch surprised to see his name in the starting 11 over somebody like Ali Khan, and we haven't gotten any communication whether Ali is still nursing a hamstring injury or what. But Tula gets in his first two overs. He's somebody who, for those not familiar with the USA, had a torn ACL in 2017, needed reconstructive knee surgery, missed a good year of cricket, and made his comeback for USA in the Super 50 last October. Played a couple of matches there. Didn't go to Oman for the Division Three tour, but has been selected for this tour, and he's fought hard to get back into the team, and those two wickets show that hunger in that fight. Absolutely. A shame and flashes, plays and misses. First ball of this over. He certainly looks look doesn't look like he's been away from the game for that long. He's taking his opportunity so far in those first two overs. Two wonderful wickets. Real big impact at the top of this innings. You could argue that his fitness is actually better since the surgery <laughs> than it was before the surgery because of just how hard he's worked. He's, he's really put in a huge commitment to his fitness. He's one of USA's top fielders. He's a very active player in the field. And with the ball now, he's showing his value too. As the USA players go up for an appeal, going down the leg side from the looks of it, although we are sat at cover. <laughs> we probably don't have the greatest view. Indications would suggest it was going down the leg side. The umpire's having none of it. Even though we're square on it, looked like it, it just pitched a bit too short for it to have any chance of LVW. You mm. need to get it a bit fuller and straighter from that angle. And, and a bigger challenge for USA than, than Bowen... UAE out right now is making sure they get five overs in with the rain increasing. Absolutely. It's starting to fall harder now. And that's going to be a cat and mouse with Duckworth Lewis in terms of, oh, we're not even going to get there as the umpires no. wave, wave the covers on. The ground staff will be coming on from that. The ream ram end here. On comes the buggy. And 29 for two after 3.3 overs. A cracking start from the USA. And once again today, a frustration of the rain. Nibbling into these overs of ours. On what is a historic day for USA cricket, their first official T20 international. And they've been very impressive so far, Peter. Well, if you contrast the fielding aspects of the two sides, that's what stood out to me. Second ball of the chase, Monang Patel was just a sensational diving catch going essentially one-handed. He put two hands up, but the ball got into his right hand and it stuck the landing. Interesting story about that, Barney. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Monang's dad flew in from Ahmedabad, Gujarat, for this tour. There's a couple players here who've got families here. Monang's dad is here. Jaskaran Malhotra has some family members here. We're also on the boundary. But... I saw Monang said, went over to introduce myself as the ball is hit in the air to midwicket, <laughs> as he's diving to take the catch. And I say, oh, Mr. Patel, sorry to distract you. Your son <laughs> just took an amazing catch, and you didn't get to see it. <laughs> and then he finished shaking my hand, stormed past me. He was not happy. <laughs> I ruined the moment. <laughs> sorry, Mr. Patel. Sorry, Monang. <laughs> you became a personal sight screen for him at the... But hopefully he'll have a few other chances later in the tour, if not today, because it's looking kind of bleak right now. Uh, it is looking bleak now. We have scheduled 9.3 overs left in this, but those are going to be eaten away at from this. One of the heaviest rainfalls we've had actually today. A real shame on this. Again, a historic day for USA cricket. I think it's going to be a frustrating one. Think of all the places they, they would have thought to tour as preparation for going to Namibia next month. This is probably the safest bet of the lot in terms of getting the maximum amount of game time and practice and preparation in because when does it rain in Dubai? Well, all they had to do was ask Nepal. Absolutely, yeah. It's just a, a month and a half ago, so, uh, something like that. We had a rain-affected game, you know, reduced to 10 overs. It does seem crazy that in the space of two months, we've had two games here that have been so affected by rain. 
I think the average rainfall in Dubai is about five or six days a year. Here we are, cricket being affected twice in the space of two months. Enormously frustrating. The cover's now coming on. The umpires are still out there having a nose. You wonder. It only takes another nine balls to make an official match. How keen the officials will be to rush through if even there's the slightest window of a let up if they're going to try and hurry the match and hurry the players back on just so they can get an official result or are they going to try and stick to the proper protocol and go through the official checks and make sure that the conditions are are proper because even though we've had quite a bit of rain today the thing that that's that stood out to me and I think for anybody else who's here the the drainage is good the the outfield has been r lightning quick nobody's appeared to have any issues with their footing the bowlers run ups anything along those lines so if if they can get out there it would be fantastic but obviously there's been quite a huge chunk of time lost already and you wonder how much how much longer they can wait before they've got to pull the plug on today absolutely and cricket isn't at the best of times known for trying to rush through its results they normally follow the laws by the letter and yeah we do have just those nine balls to constitute a match here the rain is ceasing a little bit as, as Peter mentions there here in Dubai where the wind will come across the pitch it does clear very quickly we've not had any instance of misplaced footing or any problems with any run-ups so the turnaround can be very quick I guess the the big positive that you could say is they haven't put that full cover on the square it's only basically the pitch that's covered at the moment so if the rain does hold hold off you can get back on the field quick you don't have to go through the whole charade of dragging the full slate of covers off it's just that that pitch covering the, the cover that's that's directly on the pitch itself that they'd need to get off and do quick checks yeah, it does feel like the umpires are giving us every chance of getting out back out there as soon as possible. I think from the USA perspective, it would be a, a, a huge shame if they couldn't get the result because getting those two quick wickets, they're in such a dominant position now for any Duckworth-Lewis calculations. We don't have an official calculation, unfortunately, to see w where they would be, but I'd imagine they're quite a ways ahead with the two wickets falling when they have and uh, to get a a victory in the maiden T20I it would be, quite, be quite the start wouldn't it it'd be quite the start that means they wouldn't be able to lose the series as well it's obviously just two games here today and tomorrow at the same time 2pm local time here at ICC Academy it would be quite the result for the USA he said we need to get at least those nine balls in In addition to Jesse Singh with those two wickets early in the chase, the other star of the day, Stephen Taylor, with that maiden T20I half century for the USA. He was he was beating the ball, as <laughs> as the West Indian guys like to say. He was beating the ball, beating the ball over the boundary. Nine fours, three sixes in his 72 off 39 balls. And... It was certainly impressive knock. What what has stood out to you, Barney, seeing USA out here? Well, Taylor especially. He was absolutely superb. I thought that the way he timed the ball, going over the top, going through the infield, I thought he was very good. And I think there's a very nice balance to that USA batting lineup. They have they have hitters, as as you said earlier on. You had Hayden Walsh who came in and looked to be a bit more artful with his run scoring. They ran well between the wickets. Um, I thought they paced everything really well, the, especially when this match has been rain affected. It's been stop-start, so the momentum's been difficult to build. I thought they were 
absolutely superb. The UAE have been off the ball today, I think certainly, especially with the ball. Expect a lot more from them with the ball here on in home conditions. Um, but the USA have been very impressive. I think there's a, a lot of talent in, the, in that side, especially in that batting lineup. And then Jesse Singh, superb with the ball to start with here. I mean, so far so good. That would be my assessment for, for the USA. Have any of their contributions today surprised you? Roy Silva, he's somebody who I've been quite harsh on in my reporting. And as I said it when I, I was on commentary during the first innings, he's, he's somebody who I think frustrates a lot of supporters in the USA because he's proven in local cricket how destructive he can be when he comes into a situation like that. And in a lot of these tournaments that he does play, he, he features as an opening batsman. He's somebody who takes advantage of field up in the power plays and can hit the ball a long way, as he showed. He had the advantage of, of the short boundary on, on, on the west side, but he, he sees that advantage, hitting the three sixes off the three consecutive balls. And when you see him produce like that, you sit back and scratch your head sometimes and wonder, well, why doesn't he do that more often? And for him, it's just a matter of, again, finding that consistency that can make him a dominant presence if he, if he gets going. He's at the tail end of his career. He's 38. He's going to be 39 in another two months. He's still a very fit cricketer, though, in spite of his age. You could argue he's actually one of the fittest guys in the USA team. So that's not something that's necessarily a worrying sign or something that would raise a red flag. But on paper, somebody who's coming into the, the team making their debut two years ago at that kind of age, they need to produce and produce quickly because you don't know how long they're – their leash is going to be in terms of staying in the side. He's he's had a lot of faith shown in him by the coach Pubudu Dasanayake, and today he rewarded some of that faith with that brisk cameo he had coming in late in the innings. Yeah, he's highly effective, at least today. You mentioned the coach there, Desanayake. He's been in charge in Nepal and Canada as well, so he knows his way around associate cricket. What kind of impact has he had on, on the USA national side? Well, he's the only coach who's taken USA up to Division Two. He can hang his, his hat on that. It's something that USA had five cracks at, trying to go up from Division Three to Division Two, and whether it was Clayton Lambert or Robin Singh or Thiru Kumaran. There were a number of coaches in there who tried and failed despite having quite a lot of talent at their disposal. Now, to be fair, Pobudu Dasanayaka has gotten way more administrative support yeah. than any of his predecessors. Those teams had abundant talent, but one could argue that their failures to progress beyond Division Three were significantly held back by a lack of preparation, a lack of administrative support under the USACA regime at that point in time. And in spite of US USA's suspension as a, as a cricket country, the support that they've gotten from the ICC has been above and beyond not just what USA has experienced in the past, but w above and beyond what a lot of associate countries whose membership is in good standing Absolutely. experiences. <laughs> so Pobudu Desanayak has come in, gotten that assistance from the ICC, ICC Americas, Project USA, now USA Cricket. The caretakership has evolved through, through those uh, stewards leading the USA, and the financial support, the support in terms of manpower, having assistant coaches, guest coaches, other staff who 
contribute to help things along on tour and leading into tours he's gotten access to and then just being able to have time with players there, mm. there's never really been a coach who's more or less been full-time with USA before him in the past it was always kind of parachute in 